Hello and welcome to PBCJ Presents, our weekly current affairs discussion series. It is here that we take a deep dive into matters affecting Jamaica land we love. I am Maya Chung. This week we take a look at artificial intelligence, specifically its impact on the media sector. Is AI a threat to journalism? The Globe observed World Press Freedom Day on May 3rd. The Press Association of Jamaica, PAJ, staged a forum on the issue ventilating whether or not AI is more menace than value-added tool. The panel for the forum consisted of Jovan Johnson, senior staff reporter at the Gleaner Company, Adrian Dunkley, founder of the Jamaican AI organization Star Apple, Al Edwards, CEO of Or Today, and Dr. Gunjan Mansing, head of the computing department at the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus. With World Press Freedom Day marked around the world on May 3rd, issues assailing the profession as at 2023, when compared with those of 50 years ago, have changed dramatically. Journalists now operate in a realm where the rise of the machines is not a sci-fi movie by Steven Spielberg, but right at the doorstep of the journalism fraternity right here in Jamaica. The Press Association of Jamaica, PAJ, to mark the day, staged a World Press Freedom Day forum bannered, Is Artificial Intelligence a Threat to Journalism? The PAJ has concerns about the growing impact of generative AI tools in the journalism landscape. Against a backdrop where Jamaica, as at 2023, has dropped from a World Press Freedom Index placing of 12 to 32, it seems journalists here need to start looking at other things outside of the inherent mandate of gathering the truth for the masses. Jamaica has registered a significant drop in the World Press Freedom Index, moving from 12 to 32. The Press Association isn't quite sure what the reasons are for the fall. Although we must be concerned, we don't think there's a reason to be unduly alarmed. We can testify that the structural environment remains the same. No new oppressive legislation or threats to journalists in this country. But there are still challenges which we must work to overcome. It's important to note that Jamaica is among the 30% of countries where conditions for practicing journalism are satisfactory, according to Reporters Without Borders. We will be examining the report and methods more closely and we, than we have been able to do so far. We mustn't forget that last November, a correspondent for Television Jamaica and a Gleaner reporter were attacked by a thug while covering a protest in Homestead in Spanish Town. He damaged the camera and attempted to seize the mobile phone of the reporter. He was arrested and charged, but was subsequently murdered in Clarendon in January. Today, we must also acknowledge our colleagues in neighboring Haiti, where four, four journalists have been killed so far this year, with the most being Rico Jean, who worked for Radio Tele Elevusion Inter last Tuesday. This appalling situation highlights the dangers that journalists face in parts of the world, including in our own backyard. We offer condolences to the families of those who have lost their lives in the pursuit of the truth. Similarly, in Guyana, another CARICOM state, journalists are subject to intimidation and cyberbullying by supporters of the ruling party. This is a concerning situation that has no place in a democratic society. Journalists must be free to report on issues of public interest without fear of reprisals or intimidation. Now, as we consider the role of AI in journalism, it's important to recognize that while it can bring many benefits, it also poses significant threats to journalists. For example, AI-generated deep fakes can be used to spread misinformation and manipulate public opinion. 
Additionally, AI-powered tools can be used to track and monitor journalists, impersonating reporters and thereby compromising their safety and the confidentiality of their sources. Therefore, as we move forward, we must work together to ensure that AI is used in a responsible and ethical manner. Journalists must be aware of the potential risks associated with AI and be equipped with the necessary skills to navigate this new terrain. It's also critical that governments and other stakeholders take action to protect journalists and to uphold press freedom, both online and offline. In conclusion, on this World Press Freedom Day, let us recommit ourselves to the fundamental principles of press freedom and the protection of journalists. We must stand in solidarity with our colleagues around the world who are facing persecution and work together to ensure that AI is used to enhance rather than undermine the critical role of journalism in our society. Within the current context, according to journalist and PAJ director George Davis, a key issue is would people rather their news be researched and delivered by a human or a bot? The question you have to ask, or we have to ask ourselves, when did news organizations start using AI? That can be traced to the Associated Press in 2014. They said that their foray into AI began when their business news desk began automating stories about corporate earnings. Prior to using AI, news editors at the AP and reporters spent countless resources, in the AP's words, on coverage that was important but repetitive and more importantly distracted from higher journalism. It was this project, they said, that enabled the AP to experiment with new projects and in their words, establish leadership as more news organizations looked to adopt the technology themselves. We remember not so long ago, 2018, China's Xinhua News Agency debuting a male news anchor who was totally AI. And of course, earlier this year, they debuted the female version of that 2018 news anchor. Now, the advancement of AI, I believe, prompts a few crucial questions for journalists, those who own media houses, or those who run news organizations, uh, the consumers of journalism, those three groups especially. And there are specific questions to ask each group. For journalists, I think, at this time, the most important question to ask of journalists is this. Can journalists use AI ethically? I think that's a major, major question that I hope we can answer today. The question for media owners is this. What's your plan for the responsible integration of AI in the journalism produced by your organization? I think that's one of, if not at this time, the most important question for media houses and media bosses. And then for the consumers of journalism, I think the most important question at this time is, how important is it to you that a human writes the news that you read? There was an ad placed online on April 21 this year by NewsQuest. NewsQuest, the Deputy High Commissioner, I'm sure they're familiar with NewsQuest. NewsQuest owns about 27 titles in the UK, newspapers in Hereford, Watford, and several other, several other places. NewsQuest put an ad, published an ad, April 21 this year, seeking an AI-powered reporter to quote, join our team and help us expand our use of AI technology in the newsroom. The ad said the successful candidate will be at the forefront of a new era in journalism using AI technology to create national, local, and hyper-local content for our news brands while also applying their traditional journalism skills. It noted that this is an exciting opportunity for someone who's passionate about journalism and the potential for AI to transform the way we produce and consume news without losing sight of the importance of quality reporting and writing. And then they list what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine key responsibilities. Well, nine and about 14 key responsibilities that that AI reporter is supposed to have. And the employment type, Permanent, so they want this member to be a permanent member of staff at a remuneration of 22,000 pounds sterling, 
which, I mean, it's not a straight comparison. We all know the cost of living there is different from here, but just for us to understand what we're talking about. 22,000 pounds sterling based on the BOJ's latest rate, 185, it works out about 40 million Jamaican dollars. So they have set their stall out NewsQuest for an AI reporter. I remind you that NewsQuest apart, Men's Journal, CNET, they have used AI to write articles about health and personal finances, although those entities have been hit with complaints from readers that there are several inaccuracies in the reports generated by AI. And then BuzzFeed, it announced that it was using AI to enhance it, its quizzes online that are very popular, the crossword puzzles and everything else. And uh, that the AI assistant created by BuzzFeed has already produced 40 odd travel guides, although one critic of travel guide writing noted that those articles in the main, those guides in the main, those 40 odd travel guides in the main were, quote, incredibly hackneyed. United Kingdom's Deputy High Commissioner to Jamaica, Daniel Shepard, in addressing the forum, highlighted the fact that the world of journalism is changing rapidly, a fact which no one can stop. The world of journalism is changing rapidly with the digital age and social media influencing the way that journalists do their jobs. One major change in recent years has been an increased reliance on artificial intelligence to cover stories, gather information and distribute it to audiences. Artificial power is growing so fast that some experts predict AI will be doing all the tasks associated with journalism by 2040 or 2050. Now for transparency, what I just said in my opening remarks was uh, produced by an AI tool which was given uh, specific parameters to follow. <laughs> I mean, I've no idea if uh, where the 2040 or 2050 figure uh, date comes from, but uh, yeah, it just goes to show how powerful AI tools can be, that uh, you can make those remarks and nobody bats an eyelid, it's just another diplomat speaking. Anyway, now on to the part that um, my hardworking team and I put together ourselves. <laughs> um, I am conscious that there are concerns about how the development of AI will affect press freedom in Jamaica and even worldwide. Though I can't speak to how it will be used, I can be confident, I think, that it is here to stay. And there are clearly benefits of this development for journalists worldwide. AI can increase journalistic productivity by automating mundane tasks, as, as George mentioned, such as collecting data or formatting stories. You are watching PBCJ Presents. Our topic this week is Artificial Intelligence a Threat to Journalism. When we return, we hear from UNESCO representative for the Caribbean, Dr. Anna Paulini, on speculation as to how AI is and will affect independent journalism. Welcome back. You are watching PBCJ Presents as we look at the dangers that artificial intelligence pose to journalism and journalists. Dr. Anna Paulini, Director and Representative of the UNESCO Office for the Caribbean since July 2022, represented her organization at the forum. These technological developments are opportunities for addressing and reducing societal in inequities, creating new industries and improving access to high quality education. But they also pose the specter of the winner takes all scenarios and wider gaps between haves and not haves. We are at the pivotal time. We must take action. UNESCO is fostering awareness, inclusive, multi-stakeholder debate and advocating human rights-based principle for regulating artificial intelligence and other frontier technologies. This is reflected in the action that led in the 2021 uh, to the adoption of the recommendation on the ethic of artificial intelligence, the first of such international instrument. The Windock Plus 30 declaration, also adopted in 2021, provides principle for information as a public good. UNESCO is bolstering trustworthy journalism by advocating policies to address the financial and viability challenges facing independent journalism. People are trying to figure out what really is AI. You know, is it people like your 
acting humanly, you're acting rationally. George was talking about the movie, AI movie. Then if you look at the Star Trek days, you know, Mr. Spock and uh, uh, thinking rationally. But when we are talking about people now, is it really thinking rationally or is it acting humanly? What are these various things? And even researchers in this field have struggled with what was AI. And then they came up with like two properties of AI, saying that you know if something is autonomous and if something is uh, uh, you know adaptive, then yes, it is going to be considered to be an AI system. And then from that perspective, then you know it's like I've told you that AI has been around for a long time, and I would really like to take you to the timeline. Um, it's not a new kid on the block. It's been around from 1950s. You dated it only to 2001, right? Startup, Startup for, for you, for journalism. But it was around even 51 years before that. So that's powerful. And um, it's, it's been trying to make waves. And this is on this slide is what we call the good old fashioned AI. You know, and yesterday we were talking about that in 1997, um, an AI computer even beat Gary Kasparov, the grand chess master, and that time everybody started, you know, looking at, and it was not, now in the, in the video that you saw, you had two words, some people saying machine learning, some people saying AI, and nowadays everybody uses these two words interchangeably. So when we are talking about the world of chat GPT and all, we are really talking about machine learning. So this was what we call the good old fashioned AI. And then this suddenly changed in 2016 and 2017 when there was AlphaGo, which was another game. Um, which, which actually used machine learning to beat the Go champion. And then 2018 is when, is a new timeline as I would say, that's when ChatGPT came about. So it's not, an, even ChatGPT is not something just new. It has been there for a little while. Uh, two years ago even we had used it in our you know, re little research project looking at copyright issues in um, creative industry. So that was a very nice seminar we had done with some lawyers and people from creative industry and people in technology. So you can create music with it, you can create art with it, and it's quite powerful. And that brings about lots of questions about really what, wh you know, what is it that we can do with it, first of all, the capability, because so far, Earlier on, you know, we were th talking about the repetitive things that AI was doing. Now, we're talking about the creative world. And as you said, that, uh, you know, it, it, can cr it can create content. Let me just tell you what this world of AI and especially this machine learning for chat GPT is. It has been trained on these following data sources. There was something that the person said earlier, saying that we create news, AI can create news. AI doesn't create news. AI is using all the data it has from these sources. This is what ChatGPT is using. It's using this uh, common crawl, you know, Twitter, your Wikipedia, all your books, journals, newspapers. We have all the media people here, Reddit. Uh, it even uses movies. It uses the, uh, you know, the captions to understand how to get the conversation part going. I found that quite interesting. So it's using that to really understand how it can communicate with people. So it's using all these kinds of data. And with this, all these kinds of data, what can now happen? People are worrying about journalism. And these are recent articles, recent articles talking about AI journalism is getting harder to tell from the old fashioned human generated kind. And this is just a few days ago. And even another one which speaks about ChatGPT journalist found running almost 50 AI-generated content farms. And these are not doing so well, and I, I don't know where the future is going in this industry, but it's something really worth thinking about. We have to be mindful about what we are putting out. So if you invent a new technology, you uncover a new class of responsibilities. So do we know this new class of responsibilities that are going with this, the newest thing around, which is ChatGPT, do we know the newer responsibilities? And that is something that is worth thinking because I'm sure that if we look at all the rules that if technology confers power, it starts a race. We have seen that happen before. And if we do not coordinate, the race ends in a tragedy. So that's not where we want to go. People are big wigs in the technology industry are now asking to pause this. And they are saying there'll be no chat GPT-5. There will be 4.5, maybe 4.555, 4.666, I don't know. But they say there will be no chat GPT-5. So let's see where this takes us because uh, 
this is something which is very interesting and where it's going without the responsibilities we have to be very mindful how do we use chat gpt as a teaching slash supportive tool versus a cheating or a harmful tool so it is there it's very much there to stay how are we going to use it we as a human race have always learned to evolve right how are we going to evolve with this technology Welcome back. On this episode of PBCJ Presents, we look at the dangers that artificial intelligence poses to journalism and journalists. We now join AI specialist Adrian Dunkley. I'll pose a question to everybody first to start off. Let's say you had a friend that you spoke to every day for five years of your life. And you only spoke to them through WhatsApp or an email. You never saw them in person. But you at least spent three minutes a day with them reading a text, reading a post, maybe they sent you some content to read. And then at the three-year mark, they say, hey, I'm doing a concert. Can you pay 100 US to come to the concert? Okay? Then you go to the concert to meet them and you realize it's an AI bot, they don't exist. How do you feel? Would you be hurt? Uh, deceived, right? So bit of a stretch, but we're getting to that point. So imagine a news outlet fully run by an AI who's convincing you about ethics, thinking about what, how you should dress, what you should listen to, what you should eat, and you don't bat an eye because you're so used to them, because you are a 13-year-old child, and now you're 18, but you've already been captivated and captured by them. He indicated that while the benefits of AI are amazing, the concerns need to be addressed with alacrity. If you think about the most vulnerable of us, which are the kids, which don't know any better, how is this going to affect them psychologically? Are they going to now be okay having friend, being a friend with something that isn't human? Because remember pet rocks? You can, be a, you can have a pet rock as a friend. So imagine this thing talks back to you. Right. As humans, I feel like we're very, very intelligent, but at the same time, maybe crazy, very vulnerable when it comes to emotions. And if you understand enough about us, you can manipulate us, which I think journalism is such a powerful tool for good and bad. If you go back to that, if I know, let's say, 10 things about you that I can use to get you to listen to me for three minutes a day, why would you believe anyone else over what I'm telling you without any evidence? Are you really going to check the sources? No, you're expecting me to check the sources. So the concern to me is, as was mentioned, truth. Is there consistency with respect to truth? No. <laughs> and you're now weaponizing it on a scale that's insane because no, you can create a customized message or article for a million persons with enough processing power send it out, curate it to them, and continue to refine the message. So you no longer need, let's say, 10 scammers in a room 24 hours a day. You need one really good AI engineer with enough processing power and a little bit of time. And you've basically created your own independent political party that's going to destroy Jamaica. And that is it for this episode of PBCJ Presents. I have been your host, Maya Chung. Our topic has been artificial intelligence, menace, or value-added tool. Follow us on YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and email us your feedback at pbcjpresents at pbcjamaica.org. Stay tuned. We have more great programming coming up.